Okay, right, hello and welcome back to another video. So, uh, this week we have something a little bit different um, to share with you guys, uh, and that is this level here. Now, if you've been doing this as long as I have, uh, you might recognize this. This is the Particle Cave Samples level. So this is a level that Epic put out um, a long time ago. Uh, it's available here in the Samples tab uh, down here, Particle Effects, uh, and it was put out to uh, demonstrate the brand new technology of GPU particles. Um, obviously not brand new anymore. It is in fact uh, 10 years to the week, I think, uh, since this was released. So it's uh, getting a little bit long in the tooth now, um, but <clears throat> it was a really good resource when I was first starting learning uh, Unreal um, to see how particle effects were made, to see how environments were built. Um, and there's some really cool things in here. There's obviously some magic and some fire um, some dust, some atmospherics, you can see some nice water over here, there's a big waterfall kind of behind us. Um, a really nice kind of like little showcase level, um, some nice lighting, all static baked lighting, uh, which was obviously the uh, the approach at the time, some animated god rays, and then coming out here we've got this kind of exterior weather snow area as well. So um, really nice resource, really nice uh, sort of demo project to learn from, to reverse engineer. Uh, and so I decided that it would be a good idea to remake it, bring it forwards, remaster it. It's 10 years old, uh, it's getting a little bit dated, uh, and there's a lot of new technology and new techniques we can use. So here we are. Uh, this is it brought into uh, 5.4. Obviously it looks pretty different at the moment. The lighting's different. Um, there's lots of effects that are missing. There's no waterfalls or anything like that. Um, but the idea is that we're going to remake everything. So the original was static meshes. We're going to start using Nanite. And the original was all with cascade particles. We're going to be using Niagara. Uh, and the original was baked lighting. And so we're going to be using Lumen and all those kind of modern up-to-date techniques in here. Cool. I'm not doing this all on my own. I'm working with an environment artist, Mr. Will Brosh. Um, you can check out his art station here. I'll put this link uh, in the comments below. Um, and he'll be doing the environment work and I'll be doing the uh, the VFX and sort of tech art and support on top of that. So uh, it's only been a week. <coughs> We've made a bit of a start. Um, firstly, on the sort of environment side, we'll be using a lot of mega scans. So we did a lot of research in R&D into which mega scan sets would be good for this. So this is the uh, Icelandic um, volcanic rocks set. Um, and you can see this sort of starting to build out this area here. So this is the new cave mesh. Um, replacing the old so trying to be as sort of close to the original as possible kind of do a one-to-one -one, um, remaster I think uh, it's probably a nice way to do it so there's been a lot of, of that um, one thing we are doing differently uh, is the uh, landscape so the original model didn't have a landscape um, and but for things like runtime virtual texture blending um, so being able to nicely blend these models into the landscape um, we want to be able to do that and you can see here, they're sort of picking up the normals and the edges. Um, so, uh, so we put a landscape in. Uh, with the landscape as well, we're able to use the new Nanite Tessellation landscape. So this is experimental in 5.4. Um, so, so far it's been a little bit unstable, um, just been in terms of setting it up, but once it's there, it seems to be okay. Um, and we'll just turn that off for a second so you can see the difference it makes. So here, we've got nice bumps from all these rocks from the height map. Uh, and if we disable that, it goes very, very flat. So there's actually a water plane that's clipping through, which is giving us that nice um, kind of breakdown. And there you are. So, so we're going to definitely do some more research and development with that as well. Um, let's give a quick look at the landscape. Uh, if I just hide everything else, and put the light back on so we can see. So the approach for this is um, kind of built up with some base layers and then some modifiers on top. Uh, so the landscape material has uh, an auto layer, uh, so the um, the sides automatically pick up that they're cliffs based on the angle that they're in. Uh, there are two layers for the sort of terrain, um, the larger rocks we have here and there's more sort of gravelly, pebbly rocks we have there. Uh, and then we've got the ability to paint a wetness mask. And so it doesn't care what's underneath, that's like a modifier. Um, and we can paint that on top. Uh, and the same with snow as well. So outside we can kind of paint snow and it doesn't care what's underneath. It's just using a bit of shader math to, to work out how to sort of paint that snow on top as well. So good first pass, I think. And you can see here we've got some very crude painting 
hasn't really had any time spent on it, but um, but a good start for that kind of base layer. And then we're obviously going to have meshes and everything on top of that as well. Uh, all of the techniques that we're going to be using here are covered in the courses that I've put out. Uh, and so hopefully this will be a nice sort of demo level uh, that you can use as sort of uh, a bit more of a bigger worked example than, um, than the courses currently have. Cool. Uh, so let's bring all these things back. Um, so one of the first things that I always like to do in one of my projects, um, it's a bit different here because we're working with a remaster. So we already have the environment built. We already have a uh, first pass lighting and I am using the original lighting in here as well. Uh, the original scene didn't have uh, a directional light or skylight. So that's been added, um, which I think helps bring out a lot more detail here outside, especially uh, on the side of the tower here. Um, but we are using yeah, the original lighting for now. I mean, that will get replaced and changed. Um, but one of the things I like to do very early in a project uh, is sort of specify my uh, my final shots. Um, obviously, it can change; doesn't matter. Um, but it's nice to have a fixed series of screenshots or a fixed series of locations that we can save. Uh, and the way I do this usually is with the bookmark system. Uh, if we look up here, uh, we have bookmarks. So I have saved out uh, bookmark zero to five uh, or one to six, I think it is, um, <clears throat> as locations. Uh, in the world, uh, and I've done this both in the original project. Uh, so if I hit three on the keyboard, we get this close up with the waterfall in the background. And then if I go back to the new scene and hit three, we get a very similar uh, camera as well. So having a, a one to one comparison between the old and what's nice with this um, is it allows us to sort of save out progress shots. Uh, and one thing I have done, which I think is a really nice way of, of working, is I've made a cinematic. Uh, and what this cinematic does, if I open it, it has my cameras saved. So the, the nice thing about the bookmark system is that it's very easy to uh, jump between different cameras, no problem, um, but they are written to the level, so you can accidentally overwrite them. And so by having a, a cinematic here, I've kind of used this to save out those locations, so I can always go back to those original locations uh, if I want. Um, and I've actually created an event within here, so an event track. Um, and each one of these events just calls this thing here. So execute console command, high res shot, 1920 by 1080. So what this does effectively is create an automatic screenshot tool. Now we're not making a game, we're not making a level, there's no logic, there's no player, there's no collisions. Um, what we are doing is portfolio work. But what that means is if I just click play, it's gonna quit the game, give it a few seconds to load in the snow uh, and all the effects. And it's gonna take a screenshot, 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 screenshot screenshot uh, and it's just going to take those six screenshots and save them out um, to the save directory now obviously this is the kind of thing you want to do if you're doing portfolio work student work anything like that or even just on any development you want to kind of keep a record of as things are developing make sure that things are moving in the right direction just kind of it's nice to have a record you can do a nice animated gif at the end to show the sort of progress um, but taking those screenshots and remembering to do that can be quite laborious very easy thing to forget Suddenly it's been three weeks, you've made massive changes, you've forgotten what, um, what's happened uh, and you don't have any screenshots. Well, <clears throat> this idea of using a uh, matinee, uh, sorry, a sequencer as a sort of exporter, um, I think works quite nicely. So that's another thing we set up this week and now we've got um, a nice easy way of saving out screenshots uh, to, to keep a record of what's happening. Cool, all right. Um, Obviously, a few first pass effects have gone in. Some of these are from libraries that I have uh, already. Um, you can see, for example, I've just thrown a fire one here. It doesn't fit at all. Um, very good idea, I think, to do this kind of block out, get the, get the visuals in as soon as possible so you can see what's where, and we'll come back and we'll do nice polished passes on this. Um, I'm a big fan of working as close as possible uh, to what the final's gonna be. Obviously, if this isn't here, we can add it later. It's not a problem. Um, but just by having that little bit of movement in yellow here, every time we see it, we're kind of seeing it a bit more developed towards towards what the final will be. Cool. All right. So I think that is it for this week for the first sort of dev diary. Um, just to recap, we've been doing some environment research. Um, big task for next week's environment tasks is going to be uh, replacing all of these cave meshes um, with these final nanite meshes. Uh, start to like develop the set dressing, painting in the floor, this kind of thing. Um, so I think we'll see some big advantages there. Um, I've done some first pass of the snow. I want to do a bit more development out here. Um, I'm going to work with the fog, try and hide some of this environment. Um, 
not sure how much we'll end up doing in the Vista. We'll see how time uh, time develops. Um, but going to start doing some work on the uh, materials inside as well. So looking at some of the light shafts, some of the uh, the waterfalls, that kind of thing. Now, obviously with VFX, quite often it requires sort of the environment pass to be done first. So trying to work out um, the best way of working and what is still doable while while the environment's in uh, in flux. For example, with a waterfall, you're going to want a mesh that goes and matches the rocks. And so the rocks need to be kind of finalized first. But um, there's definitely some work being done uh, or can be done on, on particles and R&D or materials and things like that. So um, so that's going to be a big push this next coming week. So um, cool. Hopefully that is interesting. Hopefully you'll follow the development of this project. Once it's done, it will be released and you'll be able to get hand, hands on it uh, and kind of like debug it and take it apart and see how everything's been made. So trying to keep everything as neat and tidy and um, cleanly laid out as possible. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite fun to get into a, a kind of a worked example and do something a little more developed than just a few tutorials. So uh, a nice little uh, project here. So awesome. All right. As always, if you have any questions or comments or feedback, if you've got any thoughts on what you'd like to see or what is working or not working, it's a bit early days now, but especially as the project develops, that is all very welcome. Um, big thanks to my Patreon supporters uh, for supporting the channel and allowing me to do these kinds of things. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, uh, please do. Um, the link is uh, available there in the description. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you all next time.